I'm Em. I'm a yogi. I'd love to have you join me. Hit the subscribe button, tap the bell for notifications, and share this video with a friend. Thank you. In today's segment of ritual practice, we're honing in on something called Abhyanga. Abhyanga is a ritual massage performed by those who practice the science of Ayurveda. This is also known as self-care. I begin this practice by connecting with my breath and grounding myself in my feet and on my sits bones. Our feet carry so much weight throughout the day and we don't generally consider every which way our weight is distributed on our feet as we hustle from task to task throughout the day. Acupressure points in our feet are one of the most important tools in our body which eliminate toxins our feet also are incredibly important in beginning the process, sending our dirty blood or the blood that is ready to be cleansed through our kidneys and cycled through our lymphatic system up to the center of our body where all of that happens. And so when we stub our toes, when we wear shoes that are too small or too big and cause our feet to overwork throughout the day, we might end up with situations like bunions or hammer toes or calluses. And I'm not saying that this massage will keep any of those things from happening. However, I am saying that this massage allows the body to clear the passageways of our detoxification system. I use a specific type of oil for this massage. If you study Ayurveda, each dosha or body type has a specific oil recommended for their personal massage. The oil recommended for my dosha is sesame oil, and I don't like sesame oil. So I use a blend of oils, but primarily I use castor oil. I really like the thickness of castor oil. It is a wonderful protectant for the skin. It's a good barrier for the skin. It also is very thick. And when I do this massage, it gives me tension against my skin. And as I work with my breath, I engage my tight muscles on the inhale, and I relax those muscles on the exhale. I use my hands to engage with any tension or any type of knots that I might find in the tissue. I don't necessarily seek to destroy those knots. I just put pressure on them and I breathe into them. Throughout this massage, I ensure that I engage both sides of my body as necessary to keep my pelvis centered on the ground. I want to keep myself rooted here as I continue to encourage my lymphatic system and my circulatory system to do their job of cleansing my body. I've mentioned this several times in other videos, but in case you're not aware, our fascia is a tensional network. It's kind of like a network of spider webs and rubber bands that when properly hydrated and properly oxygenated can actually rebound right back into the space it originally belonged in. To help us understand this a little bit better, let's say we've sprained a hamstring. Maybe we sprained it playing football. We just overextended ourselves for just a second and something popped or snapped, etc. 
and we have spent several weeks of rest. Maybe we exercised a little, but we mostly stayed off of it. And then we went right back to our normal routine. We went right back to our work routine. We didn't necessarily pay attention to proper posture at our desk. We went right back to our normal sporting routine. Maybe we exercise regularly, maybe we don't. And we're playing football again and we feel a twinge. Maybe we feel this twinge in our knee. Maybe we feel this twinge in our hip. And that's because our fascia is also an integrative network. That means that all of it talks to each other. In fact, it is the messenger system of our entire body. And so maybe that hamstring is not the primary problem, but the fascia has attached itself to itself during the healing process. Perhaps parts of our anatomy became dehydrated during our resting period. When that happens, our fascial fibers can stick together. The spider web can become stuck and brittle and it needs to be revived back to life. This is exceedingly common. This is exceedingly common in everyday life regardless of whether or not we injured our hamstring playing football. So this type of massage where we engage our breath and our mind with every part of our being as we use our hands to press into those tight spaces as we inhale, filling our cells with fresh oxygen. And on the exhale, our body has the power to do its proper function and send those toxins into the trash. That gives our tissues space to expand and grow new healthy tissue. Our body regenerates itself every three days on a cellular level. How crazy is that? It takes a long time for our fascia to really get stuck in patterns minus a brutal accident. However, it also takes a while for our fascia to rebound back into this juicy space of freedom of movement. Think about a baby when it's first born and it's just so jiggly and floppy. It has not yet developed its joints and its limbs, yet it will develop tension in those spaces so that the baby can learn to walk. And how does the baby do that? Well, the odd exercises and body motions that you see me doing here in this video. Tummy time is a critical part of a baby's development. It's an exercise time. This is when they grow their neck muscles when their neck learns how to hold the head up. Our society has cultured us to grow up quickly, to leave the nursery behind, to leave the playground behind, to move on to the gym, to move on to the weights, to move on to sports, to move on to bigger and better and more glorious things than just simply experiencing our bodies. And taking playtime within the structure of our own cells to straighten things out, to hydrate our tissues, to oxygenate our tissues. Incorporating the breath with this massage and this exercise is so paramount. It is the most important thing because our breath is what connects us to the battery which runs our life, our nervous system.
It can take a while to get comfortable with this type of movement, and that's okay. I haven't been in a yoga studio since 2019. Between COVID and just learning to really enjoy this playtime with myself, this practice time with myself, where I don't have to listen to anyone telling me what to do. I don't have to follow a crowd. I can really engage in curiosity with my body and learn these boundaries in a sense of playfulness. I'm the type of person that loves to compete with other people even though I hate competing with other people, if you know what I mean. I'm constantly comparing myself because I feel inherently unworthy. But the fact of the matter is that's fake news. I am entirely worthy with every breath that I take. My presence on this planet is valid. It's verified. And it is what I choose to do with that breath that decides my destiny and decides my fate. So whether or not this type of exercise looks weird, I do this massage semi-daily. And I say semi-daily because I do not always have the time or the attention to focus on every single part of my body every day. So sometimes I just do the lower half of my body. Sometimes I just do the upper half of my body. Every day, I do my face and my neck. And that's incredibly helpful with my migraines, and with the neurological pain that I feel on my scalp. I don't think I said that right. It's called formication, but it's like spiders crawling on my scalp just for no reason. There's nothing there. There's no rash. There's no, what is it called? There's not even any dandruff. My scalp is beautifully clean and wonderfully pH balanced. It's a neurological issue. And so this practice allows my nervous system to connect with my body on the most feral level. Every animal that does not have free will grooms themselves in some type of fashion. They do this without thinking about it. It's instinctual to them because it's important. And it's actually instinctual to us as well. We just have to learn how to tune in. I'm so excited to keep teaching you guys this stuff. Ugh, makes my life so much better. I love you all. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Stay loving and kind.